Hi everybody, happy Friday and welcome back to Danielle Ability. I saw a video recently that was talking about the social model of disability, which basically says that it's not a person that's disabled, it's their environment that makes them disabled. This particular video that I watched went as far as to say that not having a building be accessible is a form of segregation. And I don't think that I agree with that. I think that also in a way belittles what the African American community went through with segregation. I looked up the definition of segregation and it's purposefully excluding a group of people from something. And in most cases, I wouldn't say that a business owner, for example, is purposefully trying to exclude the disabled community. It's a lot of times out of their control or they can't afford to make adaptations to their establishment to make it accessible. And so they're not trying to exclude someone in a wheelchair, for example, it's just they aren't able to or they're unaware. So I wouldn't say that it's as much a form of segregation as it is just a lack of awareness or just not having the resources to make it accessible. I don't agree with saying that it's simply your environment that makes you have a disability. I do agree that there are buildings that are not made accessible and that should be, but I also agree that there are buildings that aren't accessible that can't be made accessible because the fact is up until probably the last 50, maybe 100, not even 100 years, the world didn't have accessibility the way that it does now. And a lot of that is because people with disabilities didn't survive, you know, before there were medical advances. If they did survive, there wasn't the technology for them to go out into the world the way that they do now. So things just weren't made accessible up until, you know, people were able to be more independent. And so as our world advances and changes and people are able to be more capable, I completely agree that buildings should be made accessibly. However, you can't a lot of times make old buildings accessible. Take a historic home, for example, which I love going and seeing historic homes. But a lot of times I'm not able to see all of it because there are parts that aren't accessible. And I don't get upset by that because I know that in order for them to maintain the historic accuracy of the building, to show people what a home was like at that time, it would completely change it to add something that's accessible. And so I fully understand that there are going to be places that I go that aren't accessible. That's just a fact of my life. However, I think buildings that are being built now should be made accessible because the fact is that people are able to be more independent now. As I was thinking about this topic more, I did some research on how to become a accessibility consultant, which is somebody who goes into buildings or talks to architects as they are planning a new building. And the interesting thing that I found is that all of the different websites that I looked at who are hiring accessibility consultants say on their website you don't have to have a disability in order to be an accessibility consultant. And I found that interesting because I think it would be very difficult to understand all of the factors that would go into making something accessible if you haven't experienced having a disability. And even talking to some of my family members, they have said that there are things that I'll mention to them and they're like, wow, I never thought of that before. And they've been around me my whole life. So you would think, oh, of course they would know how to make something fully accessible because 
they've been around me my whole life. Of course, they have a better understanding than probably most people do, but there's still gonna be situations that I encounter on my own that they've never thought of because in situations that may be difficult when they're with me, they can help me with it. But if I'm by myself, they're not gonna know how I deal with it when I don't have someone with me who can help me, if that makes sense. The other aspect of this whole conversation is that in order for things to be made 100% accessible for me, that would mean making it less accessible for somebody else. For example, one of the things that as I was growing up, I never understood and would frustrate me was the bumps that are on a ramp in a sidewalk. And I was always like, I don't understand why these are there because it makes it harder for me to get up that ramp. And then it was brought to my attention that those are there for somebody who is blind so that they know and they can be aware that there's a change in the grade of the sidewalk and that a ramp is there. You know, it affects the way that they walk and their stability, so they need to be made aware that that's there. And I felt horrible because here I was complaining about something that made it accessible for somebody else. So the fact is, things can't be made 100% accessible for anybody because if it's 100% accessible for one person, it's not going to be 100% accessible for somebody else. And so what we need to figure out is how to make things as accessible as we can for everybody. Are there new and innovative things that haven't been thought of that could potentially make things easier on some people and make it so that people with disabilities can have more access to things without taking the accessibility away from somebody else in the meantime. Obviously that would be the goal is that everybody could access as much of the world as possible. I'd be really curious to hear your guys' thoughts and whatever they are, I'm not gonna be offended. I'm not gonna get upset. I'm genuinely curious if you have thoughts, whether you agree with it, whether you disagree with it, I really would love to know because I'm also trying to figure this out. So be sure to comment below and if you like my work and would like to support me, be sure to check out my Patreon page, also linked in the description below, and be sure to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys next time.